morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or your prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, I'd love to hear that. And also, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about the longevity products, formulation, skincare, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, we can help you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please head to brightsideben.com. Or you can check out my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products directly from the website. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to start yourself a longevity business and help sell, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program and make some money selling longevity products, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and now criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Treatment products, Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, made with a big old dose, 25% fat-soluble, lipophilic, premium vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no waxes, no emulsifiers, nothing your skin doesn't need. That's how I formulate my truth treatment products. You know, the vast majority of a skincare product is made up of things that your skin doesn't need. The vast majority of most skincare products is made up of components that are there to help a manufacturer sell you the product preservatives and fillers and waxes and emulsifiers and surfactants and chemicals that your skin doesn't need, the manufacturer needs it. But you're never going to find these kinds of ingredients in our truth treatment products. That's why I call the products the truth. It's all you need. You don't need acetyl alcohol, glycerol monosterate, parabens, diazolidinyl urea. I used to wear a mask when I had to use those kinds of ingredients in my formulations. When I had to put preservatives in my uh, in my formulations and sometimes I had to do it unfortunately I wore a mask yet we rub this stuff on our skin anyway we'll talk uh, we'll talk about skin we're going to talk a lot about skin health here in the next few weeks if you're interested in checking out our truth treatment products go to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com all right we're talking hormones hormone health hormones are the unifying elements in the body the body's made up of a hundred trillion individual components and hormones are the unifying element it pulls everything together the body is a coherent whole under the under the control of the hormone system hormones are made in glands gland cells specifically so when we talk about our glands we're really talking about gland cells when we talk about the thyroid gland we're really talking about thyroid gland cells And fascinatingly, these thyroid gland cells or pancreas gland cells or adrenal gland cells somehow or another know how to make hormones. They know how to produce these chemicals out of the cells. And some of them will produce 60 different hormones. 
well, maybe not that many, but certainly 20 different hormones from your adrenal glands. One adrenal gland cell is capable of making a dozen, two dozen different hormones. It's an amazing idea when you think about it. How can one little cell that's one one hundredth the size of a head of a pin, how can it have the intelligence to know whether to produce cortisol or adrenaline or, or estrogen or testosterone or progesterone? Yet it does. This is an amazing, amazing idea. And this is what I talk about when I talk about the miracle that is us, the miracle that is the human body. We should be so blown away by what we are. Yet the only time we think about our glands and our hormones and our cells and our bodies is when we're sick, when we're healthy, when we're strong, when we're vital. That's when we should be thinking and, and praising and thanking our cellular system, our glandular systems, our tissue systems, the divine force that runs our bodies. So you got hormones made in gland cells. You've got glands that secrete hormones into the digestive system and through the skin. We call those exocrine glands. You've got glands that secrete hormones into the blood. We call them endocrine glands. The endocrine glands are the ones we talk about all the time. So what is it that makes something a gland? Well, a gland is just an amazing structure that's made up of gland tissue, which is made up of gland cells. And perhaps, I think anyway, these gland cells are the most interesting cells and in the gland tissue is the most interesting tissue in the body. Gland cells secrete hormones, which as we said yesterday, along with enzymes, are the most functional chemicals in the body. You've got the enzymes and the hormones. The enzymes do the work, the hormones turn on the enzymes. Hormones are what allows the body, which is made up of independent units, a hundred trillion independent units, mind boggling, a hundred trillion independent, conscious little animals, if you will. We call them cells and the hormones integrate the whole shebang. They integrate everything. Via the activity of the hormones, these 100 trillion components, cells of the body, are weaved into one coherent, uniform whole. And this makes our hormones like an underlying fabric that unifies the whole system. And it's all under the control of headquarters, literally headquarters, the, a brain which is quartered in the head. The major hormones, as we said, are the endocrine hormones, and they're produced in the endocrine glands. These hormones, these endocrine hormones, are they go into the blood, they travel through the blood. These are what we think of when most of us think of hormones. We're talking about our endocrine hormones. Now, as I said, however, you have exocrine hormones as well. Pheromones are one of the classic ex uh, exocrine hormones. Pheromones are basically how we communicate to each other uh, in, in terms of issues around fertility and around attraction, also around fear and around anger. You ever notice how dogs and animals in general can smell fear? We say they smell fear. What are we talking about? They're smelling pheromones. Pheromones, P-H-E-R, not pheromones, F-E-A-R, pheromones. Pheromones of fear, pheromones of love, pheromones of attraction, pheromones of repulsion. All of these are how animals can tell, how animals can tell if you're scared or animals can tell if you're safe. They're sensing pheromones. Ants will drop little pheromone chemicals to tell other ants where the food is. And human beings use pheromones mostly for attraction or, or largely for attraction for sex. There's actually pheromone sprays you can get. I, periodically I'll have somebody ask me if I can make a pheromone spray or make a pheromone skin product. Perfumes are supposed to duplicate pheromones. These are exocrine hormones, your pheromones. They're secreted outside the body. You also have hormones that are secreted from a cell to, a, to another cell or sometimes from a cell to itself. A cell will actually secrete a hormone, and then that hormone will boomerang back and activate the cell itself. That's called an autocrine hormone. But by far and away, and the one, uh, ones we're going to talk about, and the most important ones by far, are the endocrine hormones. And at any given moment, you've got an endless stream of endocrine hormones surging through the blood, packing your, circula your circulatory system like, like uh, uh, cars on a rush hour freeway. It's actually pretty miraculous when you think about how this whole thing works. It starts off in the brain, and then the brain starts to communicate to all the different glands, and all the different glands pr produce hormones, and the body's activities via the enzymes ensues. All right, hang tight. I gotta, we're going to talk about the spiritual nature of hormones when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We're back. 
back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Both have search engines. If you miss a program or you want to search a particular subject matter, there are, you can go to benfuchsarchives.com or brightsideben.com. There are search engines up on both sites. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We update both regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you, John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for setting those up and maintaining them as well. If you're interested in purchasing longevity products, you can do those. You can do that right off, uh, right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Likewise, if you'd like to if you'd like to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can call the phone team also at 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Got a couple lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin health, ingredients, formulations, success story you want to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll get your calls in our next segment. So we're talking uh, hormones, hormone health, and there is a very important relationship between spirituality and hormone health. And this is not just Boulder, Colorado, airy, fairy, hippie talk either. It's actually now considered to be scientific. There's a book called The Scientific Basis of Integrative Medicine. It's a textbook, one of the, one of the first books, textbooks that I've seen that actually talks about what they call subtle energy medicine in a technical way, in a scientific way, using studies and peer-reviewed studies and, um, and, and various articles. The first chapter in the scientific basis of integrative medicine talks about hormones and the electrical nature of the body, and then later chapters talk about literally about the connection between the chakras and spirituality and hormone health especially when, as it regards the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, amazing glands. In fact, we talk, before we went to break, we were talking about how the hormones integrate the entire body. Well, the hormones that come out of the pineal gland and the pituitary gland in our head regulate all the other hormones. This is so cool because throughout history, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland have been considered spiritual glands. The, the third eye, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland make up what's called the third eye. How cool is that? You know, if you, put your, if you put your finger right where a third eye would be between your two eyes in the middle of your head, you'll actually be pointing right at your pituitary gland. And if you put your finger on the top and then put your finger right between your eyes or in your brow area where your third eye would be, and then your finger on the top of your head about the middle where those two fingers meet, if you can imagine energy coming from the, from the finger that's pointing in your forehead and energy coming from the finger that's pointing in the middle of, your, of the top of your head, if you can picture energy coming from both those fingers right where they meet is where your pineal gland is. How do the ancient people understand this? I should also tell you that because the endocrine hormone depends on the blood highway, if you've got dirty blood, you're going to have a hormone problem, period. And you can take all the estrogen replacement therapy and hormone replacement therapy you want, and your, your brilliant doctor will probably prescribe estrogen or estradiol or, or even progesterone, not recognizing that if you have dirty blood, it's not going to help. It could even make matters worse. Remember, all disease is cell disease, and behind cell disease is always going to be dirty blood. This is the core of our disease and breakdown process. Our blood gets dirty because the endocrine system, the hormone system that that dumps hormones into the blood depends on a smooth, clear blood highway to deliver hormones. If you got dirty blood from a digestive problem or a blood sugar problem or long-standing issues with oxygenation of the blood, you're going to have a hormone problem and your hormone replacement therapy isn't going to do you any good. In fact, it can make matters worse because you may not break down those hormones as effectively and they can build up and then you can end up into to with toxicity. This is where the association between estrogen and cancer show up, between hormone replacement therapy and cancer show up. You can't just take hormones, folks. Especially once you understand that the blood, that the hormones depend on the blood for their delivery. You're much better off cleaning the blood than you are getting on hormone replacement. Also because hormones depend on healthy cells for their activity, especially the cell membrane, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, if you've got a cell problem, and all disease is cell disease, you're going to also have a hormone problem. 
So hormones come out of the brain, typically out of the master gland, which is your pituitary gland, sometimes out of the pineal gland. There's a, they're kind of connected, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, even though we talk about them separately. The pineal gland secretes melatonin and serotonin, and the pituitary gland secretes factors that turn on all the other glands. This is why it's called the master gland. Sometimes an area in the brain called the hypothalamus, you may have heard of that, is involved. From there, it goes to all the other glands of the body. From the pituitary and the hypothalamus, it goes to all the other glands in the body. There's seven main glands or glandular systems. There's actually a lot more glands. There's probably about 50 or so, but there's seven main ones. The adrenals, the reproductive glands, the pancreas, the thymus, the thyroid, the pituitary, and the pineal gland. And interestingly, these correspond almost exactly to what is called in Eastern medicine, the chakras. You probably heard that term. Chakra is Sanskrit for wheel. Ancient people, particularly in China and in India, envisioned these centers, these these uh, chakra centers as circulating vortexes of energy, thus the name wheels. They didn't know what hormones were 5,000 years ago, but they knew what chakras were and they wrote about them. I don't know how that happened. It wasn't until the, the mid 19th century when Western scientists began to explore the nature of hormones and chemical messengers. But 5,000 years ago, they knew that there was something going on in these seven major centers, these seven chakra centers. And while technically, there's many of these centers, as I say, there are seven major ones. The first chakra is associated with survival. That's why it's the first chakra. It's the most important in terms of survival. That's your adrenal glands. This is your fight or flight chakra. It keeps us alive in emergency conditions. The second is the reproductive glands. This is important for the survival of the species, not survival personally, but survival of us, of the human race, procreation. Your second chakra is your gonads, the uh, ovaries and the testes. The third chakra is the solar plexus. This is, the, this is our, our, our power chakra. This is where we get independence from. And, and according to, anyway, according to Eastern medicine, this is where we get a sense of self from, a sense of independence and power. And it's also linked to the digestive system. The pancreas is the gland that's associated with the third chakra. Fourth chakra corresponds to the thymus. The thymus is your immune gland. Immune cells are made out of the thymus. And from an Eastern perspective, Eastern medicine perspective, this is your heart chakra. It's associated with love and harmony and good relationships. How do you like that? The immune system th via the thymus and the heart are linked. How interesting is it that heart disease is the number one killer in the United States and around the world? We have a fourth chakra, a heart issue in this country, in this culture, and around the world. Via heart disease, you can see this. We have a fourth chakra disease problem. Oh, guess what? The fourth chakra is involved with love and harmony and peace and good relationships. Is it any, is it any surprise that we've got heart chakra problems? The breasts, by the way, are also part of this, air, this heart area. And guess what? Breast cancer is the leading cause of, and lung cancer, which is also associated with this area, are the leading causes of death by cancer. How interesting is that? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're going to take a break and come back with more good health information. Don't go away. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about health. Prescription drugs, nutrition, nutritional supplements, formulations, skin health, longevity products, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We can help you change your life today. We can help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today by getting on a good nutritional supplement program and just understanding the basics of how the body works. So we're talking hormone health and the chakras. The first chakra is associated with survival. Your adrenal glands, second, is associated with the reproductive centers, reproductive glands, the ovaries, the testes. This is a, this, the second chakra is our survival of the species chakra as opposed to survival of the self chakra. The third is related to the solar plexus. This is our power center, the center of the body, the intestine, really. The nervous system that's associated with the intestine is the is the solar plexus. It makes sense. You know, when I was playing basketball in high school, they would always tell us, always look at the center, at the belly, 
Look at you. Uh, you know, you can make all kinds of fake moves with your hips and your shoulders and your and your uh, uh, and your hands if you're dribbling a basketball. But the belly doesn't lie. The belly is the center of the body. It is the solar plexus via uh, the solar plexus center in terms of in terms of uh, the nervous system, and it's the digestive system as well, and it's associated with power. It's your third chakra. The fourth chakra is your heart chakra. It's associated with the thymus and the immune system. I love how the heart is associated with the immune system. We always have immune problems. We've got heart problems. People who are depressed have lowered immunity. And interestingly, lung cancer, breast cancer, heart disease, these are all fourth chakra problems. We've got fourth chakra disease. We've got love disease via this fourth chakra connection. The fifth chakra, that's super cool. That's your thyroid. If you, we, just like we have an epidemic of heart disease, we got an epidemic of thyroid issues. Hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism. Well, guess what? The thyroid is associated with creativity and expression. And just like we have love, uh, love disease, we got expression and creativity disease as well. The uh, fifth chakra is your, is your uh, thyroid center and your creativity chakra and expression chakra. Then you have your sixth and seventh chakras. I'm going to save those for tomorrow because those are super cool. The third eye, the pituitary, and the pineal gland. Those are our light transducers. They take light and they turn it into electrical energy. Super cool. It's no accident that the pineal gland, uh, that the pine cone has been revered by secret societies and occultists for eons. The largest pine cone structure, pine cone sculpture in the world is located in the courtyard of the Vatican. No accident. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking hormone health as it relates to the skin on the bright side. Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. Time to hit our phones. Let's get our first phone call of the day. Cheryl in New York. What's going on? Welcome to the bright side. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. What's going yes. on? Seeking ways to significantly increase my absorption of calcium. Okay. My understanding, um, based on my research and also experientially, is that calcium is one of the most difficult mineral, minerals to absorb. And when I um, have attempted to increase my intake and dosage of longevity calcium products, I experience loose stools. And I know that my body is in dire need of more calcium, and I okay. need help. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Calcium is, should be the easiest or one of the easiest minerals to absorb because there's so many systems in place to make sure that calcium gets absorbed because of its vital, vital, important nature. I don't want to say it's the most important of all the minerals, but you can make a case for that. I don't like picking on one mineral or one nutrient saying it's the most important, but you can certainly make a case that calcium is the most important. When we think of calcium, we think of the structure of the body. We tend to think of bones. Right, because it's kind yeah. of intuitive that calcium is the bones. But you know what? Maybe one percent of the calcium in your body is in the bones. Mm -hmm. The rest of the calcium—I don't know if it's one percent, but it's a very small percentage of our calcium is in our bones. The vast majority of calcium is used to signal things. It's a signaling molecule. It's a messenger molecule. And we've been talking about hormones in the endocrine system. Well, calcium isn't exactly a hormone, but it has some of the same kinds of effects. It tells cells what to do. It turns cell. It doesn't tell them what to do. It turns them on. It initiates activity. It's a cell hormone, a cell um, uh, mineral, more than it is a bone and structural mineral. So there are many mechanisms in place. Vitamin D, for example, is involved in calcium absorption. Parathyroid hormone, which is a real interesting, the parathyroid is a super interesting gland that hardly ever gets any discussion, but parathyroid hormone also is involved in how calcium is absorbed. But the most important thing to recognize about calcium absorption, and this is why, as you say, it's, it has a reputation for being difficult to absorb, but even though it's really not, the, the main issue with calcium absorption involves fat. And this is true about many minerals, zinc, for example, selenium, for example. These require a healthy fat absorption system. And that means bile. And that means the intestine. And that means liver. So if you have a problem absorbing calcium, you probably have a liver, bile, intestine, or gallbladder issue. Are you with me so far? Yes, I am. There, there's a major connection, a major relationship between how the body processes fats and vitamin D 
the parathyroid, as well as the intestines and the liver and the gallbladder. And to compound things, the kidney is sometimes involved as well. So without having to work on all these different systems, what do you do to maximize your calcium absorption? Well, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm going to tell you. Number one, you focus on the digestive system, especially as it regards fats. Anybody who's dealing with any kind of calcium issue, this is why periodically, by the way, they'll, you'll hear studies that come out and say, oh, calcium supplements are bad for your heart. Have you heard these? Or calcium supplement is dangerous. Or be careful yeah. with calcium. It's not the calcium. It's the processing of the calcium. So it's not calcium that's a problem. It's calcium that's not processed correctly because there's a liver issue or a digestive issue. So using your ultimate enzymes with all your meals, taking extra bile salts, can help. Bile salts are also in the ultimate enzymes, but taking extra bile salts can help. Lecithin granules, which is a component of bile, can also help. Doing anything you could do to protect your digestive system from food toxins or food allergens, that means doing an elimination diet, looking for problem foods. Are you with me so far, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay. All your fatty nutrients, and that includes the, the, uh, the fatty vitamins, D, E, A, and K are important. And K is especially important, by the way, for calcium. This is what, this is what calcium, uh, vitamin K's main role is, is to help the body, uh, is to help the calcium system of the body. And if you have an intestinal problem, you're going to have a vitamin K problem. So making sure you're supplementing with all those vitamins, D, E, A, and K. D, probably the best way to get it is the sun. Via this vitamin D connection, the sun is a major, major tool for helping you absorb calcium because that's how you get your vitamin D. That's the best way to get your vitamin D. You can also use, of course, vitamin D supplements, and you can also use vitamin D-containing foods, particularly eggs and dairy and organ meats, but vitamin D from the sun is the best vitamin D. Essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, are going to be important for helping you process calcium as well. And then making sure you have enough magnesium. Magnesium and calcium work together. Sometimes magnesium causes loose stools, by the way. Uh, calcium tends to be a little bit constipating if you're absorbing it, but you may not be absorbing your calcium. A couple more things. So hang tight. I'll get you some more information when we come back from our break. Don't go away, Cheryl. Calcium absorption, you want to focus mostly on fats and in the digestive system, but there's a couple other things you could do. So hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. back on the bright side i'm pharmacist ben 844-236-6010 is our number we're talking to cheryl in new york about calcium absorption cheryl are you there yes i am ben okay good so we've got the fat part of the body vitamin d fat absorption part of the body vitamin d bile salts uh, lecithin granules after meals digestive enzymes uh, building bile using choline supplements, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, choline supplements, taurine supplements, glycine supplements as well can be helpful focusing on liver health. Those, these are all very important strategies, calcium as well as selenium and zinc being absorbed by bile. Bile is a very underappreciated fluid and bile defects are always going to be linked to heart disease, for example, and also problems with calcium absorption. Then there's the intestinal element. Calcium is absorbed in the intestines. So if you have a history of intestinal issues, Crohn's yeah. disease, celiac disease, all of that, you're going to have impaired calcium absorption. So working on intestinal health, food diary, eliminating problem foods, and then also the biolumin nightly essence and probiotics and fermented foods can be very helpful for calcium absorption. Same with fiber. Uh, inulin fiber, as well as soluble and insoluble fiber from vegetables and uh, veggie juices and such. Then there is the importance of the kidneys when it comes to calcium absorption. We all know about kidney stones, calcium kidney stones. Uh, and if you have any issues with kidney disease, you're going to have a calcium issue. And many people have either kidney disease or subclinical kidney problems, which aren't bad enough to get you on dialysis or, or put you in an emergency room or in a doctor's office, but bad enough that you may have some calcium issues. And again, because vitamin D is turned on in the kidneys, this can be involved as well. So if you have blood sugar, the number one cause of kidney issues is blood sugar issues. So working on your blood sugar, that's the second step. And that means the sweeties from longevity, eliminating or reducing your intake of fast-burning sugar foods that stress the blood sugar system, intermittent fasting and caloric restriction, as well as getting on the healthy start pack to get your basic nutrients for sugar 
sugar metabolism. And then last but not least, hypoxia or low blood oxygen is also involved when the body, when we become toxic, our blood acidity or, or pH drops, the blood becomes acidic, calcium will leach out of cells in order to neutralize that acid. So you'll, uh, you can run into calcium deficiencies, and you can also run into malabsorption issues as well when you're, when you're running acidic. And the best way to alkalinize your blood is not to use the pH diet or the pH miracle diet or, or, or pH balancing water or alkaline water. God's way of alkalinizing the blood is oxygen. That means making sure you're practicing your slow, deep breathing techniques, as well as activating the relaxation nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. So got lots of great strategies there, fats in the sun and vitamin D and intestinal health and kidney health and making sure that you're uh, taking care of your oxygenation needs through deep breathing and relaxing the body. That's, that's what I would be doing for calcium absorption. Don't forget your vitamin K also, all your fatty vitamins really, but especially vitamin K. Okay? Thank you. All right, God bless you, What are you, bile salts? What are bile salts? Bile, B-I-L-E, bile yeah. salts are the active ingredients, the, the active components in the liquid that we call bile. Bile is a liquid that's, that's pumped out of your liver and gets stored in the gallbladder. And when you eat a fatty food, it gets squirted out of the gallbladder, assuming you have one. Doctors love taking gallbladders out, but assuming you still have your gallbladder, yeah. the, the bile gets squirted out of your... Uh, you squirt it out of the gallbladder into the intestine, and it helps you absorb your fats and your minerals. Bile salts are the active ingredients in that fluid that we call bile, and you can supplement them. You can take them in uh, by themselves as bile salts. You'll see them listed on the ingredient deck on your ultimate enzymes and various enzyme products, or you can get bile salts, B-I-L-E, bile salts off the Internet or in a health food store just by themselves. Okay. All right. I appreciate you, Ben. Thank, Thank you, Cheryl. So much, and you have, have a blessed a, day. You too. God bless you, man. Bye-bye. Okay, Chris in Maryland, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Chris. Yes. Hi. Hey, uh, Chris. Hi, Pharmacist Ben. What's up? Uh, yes, I have a number of health issues, and I'll try to be brief. Okay. Um, but one of my main issues is that I have non-traumatic hematoma on both kidneys, and I am on dialysis. Okay. And I have what is also called polycystic kidney disease. Okay. And I'm not able to build my blood due to my kidneys. Uh, they're both, of course, they've failed. And um, I understand from what my nephrologist was telling me that uh, one of the reasons why your kidneys are filled is because uh, there's an enzyme called APD8. No, 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 no. Don't go there. There's only one reason why your kidney fails. Oh, Dirty. I understand. My high blood pressure and diabetes that, I, that I've had. Well, those are secondary. There's one major reason. And the reason I think this is important is because if you can boil it down to one major reason, there's only one thing you need to do. Right, so, right. yeah, there's enzymes that are involved, and there's genetic changes that are involved, and certainly blood sugar is involved. There's, there's all these different factors, but it all comes down to one thing. Mm. And it, this, the reason this is important is because this gives you power. This gives you control over your condition. If you're going from your enzymes to your genetics to, your, to, your, uh, to blood sugar and here and there, to and fro to all of these different factors while they're involved, you're going to go crazy. But if you can boil it down to one main issue, you simplify the whole process. You know what it is? All I, and it makes perfect sense when I explain it to you. What do the kidneys do? They're your spaghetti strainers for your blood. They're right. your filters for your blood. Correct. The only reason anybody has kidney disease, and you're in good company because there's millions of people who do, and there's the epidemic, the dialysis is like an epidemic. Mm. The only reason you have a kidney problem or anybody has a kidney problem is because the blood is dirty. Right. And this, this is so important because it simplifies everything. You can't control your enzymes, but you can control your blood because you have, you are the only person who will allow any, who can allow anything to get into the blood. Your doctor can't control that. You know, the, there's no drugs that can control that. There's no medical strategies that can control that. We control what gets into the blood. Now, mm. there's only three ways. I don't know if you've heard, you know, heard me before, but there's only yes, three I ways. That, okay, so you know what I'm going to say. There's only three ways that things get into the blood. Mm. They come in through the skin, rarely, if you're an IV drug user or through Never. vaccines. Okay, that's one way, but that's rare. The second way is through the lungs, and again, that's rare. Never the, smoke. Okay, so that's rare. You know, you may breathe something in. We got crap in the air, of course, and chemtrails and all the stuff they put, put into the air. That's a possibility. But by far and away, the number one reason why the blood gets dirty is from food. Yeah. And we control that. Mm -hmm. So kidney disease is a, 
is a blood disease. It's a sign of dirty blood. And the only reason for the most part, the, the major reason why the blood gets dirty is because of how we eat and because of the digestive tract. Breakdown in the digestive tract, it's called leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability syndrome. So for kidney disease, you got to work on the digestive system first. Now, the blood sugar is also, the system is also involved because the blood gets dirty from sugar, and oxygen is also involved because a lack of oxygen will cause the blood to become sticky and gooey and clotted and coagulated, and that will also clog up the kidneys. So between these three points, you have massive control over kidney disease. Are enzymes involved? Obviously, they're involved in everything, as we've been talking about. Is genetics involved? Obviously, genetics is involved in everything. But these are not your control points. Your control point, your major control point, is the food you're eating, especially sugar, and through and then oxygenation. So do a food diary and eliminate problem foods. That's step number one. Always, always, always eliminate problem foods. If you want to do one single thing for your health from a physiologic perspective, eliminate problem foods. And that means a food diary, of course. And then strengthen the digestive tract using good bacteria, probiotics. Get on the nightly essence. Use fermented foods. Make sure you're getting enough fiber. Also building the digestive lining with essential fatty acids and zinc. Uh, and also perhaps glutamine powder. These are all strategies for building a healthy digestive tract. And then stabilizing your blood sugar. Restricting your intake of foods that break down into sugar, of course. And then using sugar metabolizing, sugar processing nutrition. Chromium and vanadium, those are your superstar sugar metabolizing minerals, along with zinc and along with selenium. That would be your healthy start pack, your ultimate selenium. And personally, if it was me, I'd be getting on 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Find that at the health food store and always balance out your zinc with a little bit of copper. And then uh, as far as uh, nutrients, as far as vitamins go for, uh, for helping with sugar, the B complex is stupendously important and it's a major deficiency because we excrete the B complex, reg B complex regularly. At, when you're done with your dialysis, the odds are really good that you're going to be deficient in your B complex, the very <clears throat> nutrients you need for processing sugar. So make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Make sure you're using fresh veggie juices. Great source of the B-complex. Sprouts, great source of the B-complex. Eggs, great source of the B-complex. Living foods, B-complex is, the B-complex is your energy vitamins. And living foods are great sources of the B-complex. And then also, especially niacin, by the way, great for sugar metabolism. I'd be doing timed release niacin, 250 milligrams. Last but not least, my friend, please make sure you're practicing your slow, deep breathing techniques to make sure that your blood is flowing and uh, the circulatory system is moving correctly. Thanks for your call, Chris. I wish we had more time, but that's all we got time for on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking hormone health as, as it relates to the skin. We'll talk specifically about the pituitary and the pineal gland. Check out my website, brightsideben.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any truth treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.